how dumb can you be basically right like you're not playing like is there no like passion in you and there's no passion <laughs> right like just genuinely like, there's no aggression <laughs> apparently that adoption is a lie and it was a conservatorship and that means that with adoption if you were adopted you would be legally my brother still am i adopted i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the BTR Podcast. Before we continue, we finally dropped our Premier League video that we were teasing the last few days. So make sure you guys go check that out. Um, and it's a competition between me and Jobin. So comment down below what do you guys or who do you guys think will win? And what your guys' thoughts on the our predictions? Yeah, um, also, before we get started, please like, comment, and subscribe. As well as uh, follow our socials, Instagram. We're almost at 100. I think we're six away since the yeah. last checked. So give us that century mark. And... We post daily, so you guys are definitely loving the video, so make sure you guys give that a follow. Also, audio um, audio, audio platform listeners, make sure you guys download and rate it at five stars. We appreciate that as well. And yeah, let's without further ado, let's get right into it. Um, there are news. We've got NFL news. We've got soccer news. Man United finally played. we got some thoughts about, well, maybe not the game itself, but the side, the transfer stuff. But we also got some big NBA news I think we might have to get off, start off with. Do you prefer that or what? Yeah, let's start off with that. All right. So last episode, last pod, make sure you guys check that out as well. We talked about James Harden um, saying, uh, what do you call it? Oh, sorry. Daryl Morey and the Sixers saying that they're not going to trade him. And now our luck, because we record Sunday nights, literally Monday morning when I woke up for work, we see that because James Harden is in China. So obviously different time zone. James Harden has come out and said, Daryl Morey is a liar. He said that twice. So pretty much he said Daryl Morey, Daryl Morey is a liar. I'm going to say that again. Daryl Morey is a liar and I will never play for a NBA franchise that he's part of again. So obviously I had a mini rant. You kind of had a mini rant about Harden and what he's been doing. And I did mention that he joined his boy. Technically I was right. He did join his boy, but uh, clearly none of them boys anymore. So Harden essentially still wants out. We don't know if he's gonna show up, but apparently they uh did um why am I not thinking? Oh so if he were to sit out after like 30 days of like a training camp begins or something, then he doesn't uh he won't be uh required to be a, like he won't be a free agent next year. Like he's still forced to be a sixer. Actually? Yeah. So that's a rule now? That's a rule now, so like to avoid all the sim and stuff. So yeah. if James Harden doesn't report they could, he could forfeit his eligibility to be free agent next year because he's a free agent next yeah, year. Yeah, so he shouldn't be fat suiting this time, right? I mean, he could still fat suit and show up as long as he shows up. <laughs> bro, if he fat suit and shows up, bro, it's not going to look good for him. I don't know. So, like, obviously, I don't really take back anything I said. I was going to drop, like, a clip on Instagram or YouTube shorts today. But the reason why I didn't because I feel like it's going to be a little bit contradictory because I said James Harden and Daryl Morey were boys, right? So, obviously, I don't want that backlash coming back for that moment. So to be, and to also take the backlash, not, not not even that, just to confuse people. But I still stand by what with the Harden situation in terms of like, um, he's jumping ship too much, blah blah blah. You, he did join his boy Daryl Morey. Now, you, I'm not you. Out of all people, should know, know this best. Exec, an executive lying is a shocker, right, bro? Okay, you you, and you know why I'm saying yeah, that. Yeah, too. you had a chance of opting out, right? Exact's gonna do whatever he'll he more he tried. You can say that, right? He tried getting Yeah, he, so he got tried no, let me talk. He could he tried getting packages, nothing worked out. He's always gonna do what's best for a team. He doesn't give a shit about James Harden at that point. No, he's okay. not gonna nobody's gonna care about the player in that situation. Okay, right? here's my he, thing. When Harden had the leverage, he lost it by opting in. hundred percent. Here's the thing. Maury is kind of like so the reason why I said you should know out of all people is because the Raptors traded yeah, the Raptors Groat traded. at the time which was DeMar DeRozan for Kawhi Leonard now obviously different caliber player but executives lie Chris Paul was told he wasn't going to get traded from the Rockets and guess what Harden had a say in that because Westbrook ended up coming back the other way um, to your point though Maury is definitely overvaluing the hell out of Harden that's for sure right like I, if I'm the Clippers and he, if he only wants the Clippers 
right? Siakam's in a similar situation. He reports both on both and Damian Hiller that Siakam doesn't want to leave the Raptors. Dame only wants the Heat. Harden only wants the Clippers. So if any other team realistically trades for them, they're all going to say we're not extending or we're not reporting or whatever the case is. Obviously, the reporting thing, I think that's bullshit from any player, but like they're not going to re-sign in the next year, right? And I can, yeah, you can see that happening because they have a right to be a free... Well, Dame's situation is different. He's a contracted. But Harden and Siakam, they are free agents. And they, you know every player kind of wants to be a free agent to control their own destiny. And now, to your point, I could see where Harden's upset because, yeah, he, that was his boy. And this is where I'll slightly defend him because he, he took a pay cut, right? Now, it's also on Harden because he didn't perform because clearly they should have won that Celtics series. They were up 3-2 at home and then shat the bed in Game 7 against the Celtics, right? Yeah, that's, part, all, that, 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 a that's, lot of that is on Harden. The, that's, that's the whole team. I don't know. I'm going to say a lot of that is part of Harden too, right? Because he put up 40 in the Game 5 and then shot the bed after that, right? Like It was either he was like up here or he was down low. Like there was no in yeah, between. Yeah, he was hot. He was hot, but when he was cold, he was cold. He was cold, right? So he didn't help his value there. So the reason why he opted in is he trusted Morey will trade him. Clearly, Daryl Morey over uh, underestimated the um, the market because even if he just wants the Clippers, I'm not trading Terrence Mann in that case. But maybe if I'm the Clippers, I will because your best chance to win a championship, right? So. Long story short, I'm still standing with what I said about Harden that day. You guys could check out the previous episode of me and Jovan thought. Jovan thinks he's going to be a Shanghai Shark. So I mean, he might. <laughs> he might the way he's moving. But, but genuinely, he's in China though, right now. Yeah, he's in China. He, he also said, I'm willing to play in China for one year. I don't know if he means this year or before his career closes. Hey, but you might be right. You're on bold prediction. But I think the Shanghai Sharks, right? Uh, Wait, aren't they in like trouble? They're in trouble because of I think match fixing or yeah, something along that line. Don't quote fixing. me on that. But I think it was match fixing. But yeah, so yeah, um, comment your guys' thoughts on the Harden situation. But yeah, like I, this is gonna be a fun watch. The six, are like on the other side, I want to look at this. Sorry, before we move on to other things, Embiid. Now we did say that if I'm Embiid, what am I thinking? I had to deal with Simmons. I had to deal with Harden. I did see something on Twitter that caught my eye. What if Embiid's the issue? Now, I don't fully believe that because Simmons clearly didn't do anything last year and he had KD Kyrie, right? And Harden already has a history of being a diva at times. Yeah. So I, in I my mean, opinion, I, I don't think it's not much on Embiid. Not, but yeah. not as a teammate-wise or a locker room guy. Yeah. But performance-wise, you can kind of see it. Yeah, yeah. But I think right? it's more. this is more of a locker room 14, thing. 14, yeah. But like 14 points in Game 7 against the Celtics. Yeah, no, for sure. MVP. I, ag- I agree with you on that. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about more in the locker room because it has to be a locker room thing, if anything. Yeah. Because he did win MVP. He was top two MVP the last two years as well, right? So, um, yeah. Like, I genuinely... Like, Nick Nurse, we mentioned last time, last pod what's Nick Nurse thinking taking this and then I was listening to the radio and the guy's like uh Sixers beat writer was just like oh I f- um, Nick Nurse is probably thinking why did I not take the uh why did I not take the Suns no the yeah Suns and the other one Bucks Bucks the Bucks job <laughs> and clearly he's like he had a relationship with Daryl Morey and something's going wrong so last thing does Harden get moved before the deadline sorry not before the season starts yeah right like I don't. I can't really see it any other way. Maury did happening. apparently reportedly say he's fine with Harden's comments. He still has to show up to camp. So, Daryl Maury is a stubborn guy. I don't think he's the one that traded away Harden, right? So yeah, I mean, well, I mean, we'll see, right? It's like it's weird. It's definitely weird because like you want one guy leaving, exact like overvaluing him, so he's not leaving. So who's gonna win? How much did your mind change after hearing the uh, Harden comments, or were you still like on board? Like what we said on, um, he does move. He does jump shift a lot. Uh, the jump shift a lot, right? Um, th- I'll give him respect because he did look at it as a team wise. Like, if I leave as free agent, you know they're not gonna get anything. But you know if they trade me, they'll get something, type of thing. But yeah, that's at that point, move. when you're a free agent, right, and you have a opt in opt out clause, that's when you're like have your most leverage over your thing because when you're getting traded, you have no leverage. Yeah, like like look at Dame, he's still stuck. Yeah, I don't know. The thing with Harden is that everything I said goes stands, but that doesn't mean where he's not a first ballot Hall of Famer, most likely depending on how, when he retires. Still one of the greatest offensive players I've watched, right? Yeah. In my lifetime. I'm not saying he's all time, like top three or five. He's probably top five ever since I've been watching basketball, right? On a consistent basis. But we all know he's not 
number one option MVP James Harden anymore. So Daryl Morey's got to realize that. Harden's also got to realize that. He's getting 30 mil. Yeah, you're right. At the end of the day, it's a business. You should, you kind of should have known that. It doesn't matter if he was your boy or not. Yes, it's a snake move, but we have instances like your Raptors. We've had instances where KCP, and now he, he's not at the level of James Harden, but he did say he was surprised he got traded. Same thing with Chris Paul, with Daryl Morey. So I don't feel too bad for Harden, but in this case, okay, yeah, he got snaked, but at the end of the day, it's part of that business. And it's a business. You didn't live up to your trade value. Maybe you, if you had won game seven, you would have been traded, or, or he would have been getting paid anyways because he didn't get a contract the other thing was he was supposed to either get a contract extension or trade him he didn't live up to getting a 50 million dollar contract in my opinion yeah that's so, true so i mean we'll call it there for now call it there for now and uh, we'll see what happens later on i guess very quickly raptor fan i think i for i sent you this i'm not sure if i did siakam is eligible for a 300 plus million dollar contract if he gets all nba yeah now i message my buddy he's like please don't get all nba first exactly of all. right yeah but yeah, it's the same situation. He wants to stay a Raptor, reportedly, or he wants to choose his own destiny. So if he were to be traded to the Hawks, Hawks obviously don't want to give up too much because he might not resign. You still on board of getting traded? Just very quickly. Yeah, just trade him. Three hundred million. Just you, trade him. I mean, you have Marquise, <laughs> There's nothing else to say. You have Marquise Noel saying, "I want to be the greatest Raptor of all times." So you might as well build around him and Scotty and no, Marquise, maybe even OG if you have to. But he's obviously going to be a free Marquise agent. Noel is going to save our franchise. Five ten, buddy. He's our yeah, height. Five ten. I'm taller than him. He's 5'7", right? Or 5'10". Whatever he is, but like, I'm taller than an NBA player. <laughs> That's what I'll take. I mean, take. you're taller than Moxie Bogues, Spud Webb. Who and I'm like, active NBA player. <laughs> True. Um, uh, yeah, the call it there. All uh, right. Very quickly, last thing about the NBA, FIBA. Starting soon, and we have some updates for Team Canada, Team Latvia, Team Greece, from what I know. It's the injuries. And first off, the one that impacts us the most, Team Canada. We mentioned a couple of ep- episodes ago that Jamal Murray did not travel. By the way, congrats to Canada Basketball. They won that little mini exhibition tournament yeah. after losing to Germany and then beating them uh, in the final and overtime comeback win. RJ Barrett only missed one shot the entire game. But anyways, it's official. Jamal Murray will no longer be in the squad. He opted out. And it's because his body isn't fully um, rested from the World Cup. Uh, sorry, the NBA Finals because he went up to June. I was a little surprised he was on the squad anyways. Like he went to training camp. He did say that, like, yeah, if I I wanted to see how I was during training camp. So it's a little weird. We don't know if it's an injury because they're saying rehab, but then rehab requires injury. Yeah. Um, we still have the... Makes sense, we, right? This is still the best squad Canada sent out. It still, just sucks uh, that we don't have the best backcourt anymore. Yeah, that's, that sucks too. And very quickly before I ask a question about FIBA, Giannis also opting out because he's still not fully healthy. And he did say that he would rather win with Greece than an NBA championship because obviously it'll be harder. And uh, Kristaps Porzingis has opted out for Latvia as well, from the top of my head. So my question to you is this. Now, obviously, there's a historical factor. We don't know why, like, how it works, like, how historical it is, compared, not compared to the Olympics. Should the World Cup be moved? When, when though? When are you going to move it? So here's, that's my thing. You the problem move the, it anyway. the problem is if you move it during the NBA season, kind of like hockey did, the NHL did, take away the All-Star break, the Olympics is your break. But instead of, sorry, in this case, the World Cup, there's more games added, piled on, right? Now, if you move it after the NBA Finals, there's two things you wrong with that. You ain't getting the playoff performance. No, I'm saying... You ain't getting your best performance. No, no. Yeah, so yeah, two things wrong with that. Um, the players that are in deep in the playoffs might have an issue with that. They're not going to But, play. no, the bigger one is this. Free agency. So the players that are free agents might not play because they want to get their... Uh, they don't want to be injured and not, not hurt their money, right? Which makes yeah, sense. True, yeah, which makes, makes a lot sense of sense. Too. So there's two big so issues So for there. me is, like, what, it's happening the end of August, early September? End of, jul- end of July? Even? That's when so the Olympics usually, that's not. when the Olympics are usually anyways. You're not getting any finals players on but, your team either. But that's when usually the Olympics are anyways, and some of the yeah, Olympics players Yeah, you can probably move it like a couple weeks early, but... Because Chris Middleton... You're, just, you're still going to face the same issues. The players want to play the Olympics more. That's clear. Like, we've noticed that because Middleton, uh, Booker... That that finals run, they um traveled. I think holiday. I think as well. Drew Holiday. Yeah. They all traveled to Tokyo. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like if it's the Olympics, they will. So obviously FIFA World Cup is massive. Cricket World Cup is massive. Yeah. Clear uh, NHL World Cup, no one gives a shit as much. Yeah, yeah, obviously. But like I mean what what can you do? Like move it one week earlier, two weeks earlier? Like, in my, like you're in a situation I was three here. to four weeks earlier. But it's still the same thing, right? Like you're Because like, look at Team USA right you're gonna now. Face, what, what's gonna what's it gonna do? You're still gonna face the same issues. You're still fa- that, that's what I'm saying. How much less cause like it doesn't matter. No, 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 here's my thing though. With this issue is you're leading it into training camp. 
you still have time to recover for those players that want to play. Because at the end of the day, Giannis was still going to play. He opted out now because he got injured or he wasn't fully healthy, right? And yeah, you, to your point, maybe they're, they will plan their uh, bodies out. Now, uh, granted, we're not athletes, like full-on uh, professional athletes here. Yes, we've played soccer. You still play. Um, Bro, I'm, I'm fucking but it's finished. Different, but I'm just saying it's different. <laughs> like, I, underst- I understand the body is still different. Clearly, Joel Murray still hurt. So that means, yeah, you're right. He might not play then if it's earlier on and after coming back from ACL injury. But as an, I'm, I'm talking about a fan perspective and you agree with this, that it is frustrating because as team, as Canada, Canadians, team Canada has a chance to make it far this year, in my opinion. Yeah, obviously. But right? that part's frustrating in, in my Yeah, case. it sucks like that. But like, there's no other place you could really put it. There's no, you're not putting it in season. You're not putting it right after the playoffs. Like you said, it's like. This is the best the time. Only, the best time, I think, is end of July. I think that's the best time. I don't, I don't think it's going to make a difference, because it's still in my a, opinion. It's still a little bit of time. I still don't think it's going to yeah, make a difference. I'm just saying the best time is end of July for me. Comment what you guys think below, but that is, that's just me. Because the Olympics are around the same... The only reason why I'm saying it is because the Olympics are at the same time. Yeah, but And people, Olympics, jo- people yeah, play but the Olympics. Olympics are a priority. That's why. But I'm saying, again, World Cup. There's so guys better. like Giannis might still play. Yeah, I know. But there's something better than the World Cup, which is the Olympics for the players. Right, Mainly when, you, when for, you watch it, I think that's more. When you watch the Redeem Team pod, all their on the pod documentary, their focus was the Olympics. Yeah, F- FIBA was just to help them get prepared. Yeah, so exactly my point for this, right? Because the thing with Canada basketball, Canada basketball is doing exactly what um, Team USA and Redeem Team did: have a three, four year plan. So in this case, this is that three, four year plan. So if they're if it's if they want to help, first of all, they have to qualify for the Olympics, right? Canada in general, because we all know the US is going to qualify. Yeah, right, and. The thing with, uh, if it's during the, if say the World Cup is during Olympic time period, it's the same, it's the same thing, right? Because you're preparing around the same time and um, it helps you plus, because people don't realize the World Cup isn't like soccer World Cup where you just yeah. play the World Cup. You qualify for the Olympics during the World Cup. If not, then you have to do a whole nother tournament anyways. Yeah. Right. Which was what we witnessed when Andrew Wiggins and all these guys were playing it uh, in Victoria a couple of years ago. Right. So. Yeah. yeah, just comment your opinions down below. I just generally think there's gonna be no difference. Like I still think just for the, it's World the same Cup, results. Are you saying just for the World Cup? Yeah, because like World Cup is second. Because I know I would know this much yeah. from, from seeing what at least from Canada basketball side of things, they de- clearly they have a turnout because they did de- they're doing a three year yeah. plan. So I mean, yeah, I mean good yeah, news, the good news is hopefully Canada qualifies because clearly yeah, Jamal Murray wants to play. Yeah, right? but yeah, no, just comment your opinions down below. I, yeah, like we have a different opinions on this, so. Let's move on, I guess, to something else because I feel like this thing will go on forever. True. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah. Um, you want to get into soccer now? Yeah, let's go into soccer. Okay, so let's just get into Man United right away because um, they played during our last episode came out. Yeah, so I mean, we just talk about it. We'll just talk a quick comment about the game. Um, shit game. Got the win. Got the win. So that's pro. Con is. A lot of chemistry needs to be done. Nah, you got to bounce back because you can't perform like this. Cause we're lucky that we played a team that couldn't score. Yeah. If that was any other team, we probably would have gotten our ass kicked. Yeah. Obviously, Mason Mount, um, Bruno, Casemiro need to f- tighten the midfield because everything was running through the midfield. Onana, except for, you know, in your eyes, is a penalty. Yeah, right? yeah, it's a penalty. Um, But not like a clear. I don't think it's clear cut as people think it is because like it was like the ball, it was, like it was nothing to do with the play. But like the Liverpool handball was the most clear penalty on the weekend. Yeah. But yeah, no. Um, for me, Anana uh, lived up to the hype. Yeah, he did, job. Play, he did No job. one pressed him. For me, Rashford has to go on the wing. Can't work there. Granato's yeah. too young. He needs a little bit more experience. I already know your comments about Anthony, so we don't need to go there. He's just mad. Um, just for me, mad. Aaron Juan Basaka again. He was like the MIP last year, in my opinion. Not overall. I'm just saying for Man United. Same thing. R- Rafa Varane. Our yeah. backline was our best. Um, yeah, um, uh, offensively yeah. and defensively in a yeah, way. Yeah, uh, Shaw and Juan Bissaka had good games. Varane obviously got the goal. Martinez subbed off at half because the, the yellow, yellow card, card, I believe. But there were some issues, obviously, because Wolves were attacking pretty well. And, Cunha, uh, especially, yeah. But the situation. I would is, say the I would say our fullbacks were the best players. Yeah. Okay. So obviously, Tottenham this weekend will be a little bit tough. So hopefully, Ten Hag obviously. The one thing I love about Ten Hag, he's not gonna throw his players under the bus during the media, but we all know behind the scenes, he's gonna do. He's some gonna sh- do some shit. So, yeah. but here's so. And the second issue is the player signings, the transfers. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I still stand by what I said in terms of the team did get better, 
I know you're saying that it got better, but not you're not fully convinced. But as the transfer window goes on, um, you have to adapt to the other teams. No, like, don't get me started with the ownership because I feel like that's a side of things. Because in January, all they cared about was getting loan signings done, bring in Wu Tuweghorst, and as United fans, we were like, "What the hell are we watching?" Sabitzer was a good signing, but injuries. In this case, yes. Um, and then the only uh, our how do I say this? We still haven't changed from last year in terms of how quick our signings and our outgoings are going. Let's start off with Harry Maguire, and I know you have some thoughts on this. Very quickly, for people watching, especially United fans that don't know, or casual United fans, Harry Maguire, we accepted a bid of $30 million from West Ham for him to go there. Now, Harry Maguire so reportedly rejected it because he wants a bigger payout from United, 7 to $12 million pounds, and he did not agree any personal terms. There was also an offer of $60 million for Harry Maguire and Scott McTominay, which Man United rejected because they wanted more for McTominay, which I don't know why, because... Bro, you're lucky you're getting $30 million for McTominay. Yeah. <laughs> so, now, let's go back to the Harry Maguire thing. Now, that part is... The $60 million is all in United for not accepting. At yeah. least the $30 million was accepted. Harry Maguire is a fifth choice center back, and, you're, and people are thinking, wait, what do you mean? You guys have four center backs. Luke Shaw is ahead of him on the depth chart. I'm ahead of him on the depth chart. I'm just kidding. But... <laughs> No, it's just greed, right? I feel like he's just in a comfortable position right now. Obviously, and you mentioned many times what he has. He feels like, you know, as long as he's Man United, he's in a big enough club to get an England call up. Right. So I'm going to cut you off there. Um, he's also, like you mentioned, not even just that part. Forget the England part for a second. Once upon a time, he was captain. Yeah. Then- so the, like you said, the ego and the greed was like, oh, I'm the, I'm the captain of the biggest club in England. And those who want to come at the comments, come at us. We know Man United is the biggest club in England. Yeah, yeah. and pro- arguably the s- top three in the world. Yeah, so like, so what, he's the captain. Yeah, like I was saying, like like you mentioned, it's ego, greed. But like, how dumb can you be, basically, right? Like, you're not playing. Like, is there no like passion in you? And he, there's um, no passion, <laughs> right? Like, just genuinely, there's like, no aggression, <laughs> bro. What with him? He has no fucking mindset. <laughs> so like, <laughs> those of you wondering, it's a meme, but yeah, yeah I'm a uh, so. No, but genuinely, like, what is wrong with you? From right? the play- like, you, okay. do you not want to play soccer? From, so, yeah, I 100% yeah. agree with you, right? Obviously, as a Man United fan, we should have gone Kim Menje, we couldn't get him. Now, we'll get into the other two signings in a second, but from the player, now, a little bit of devil's advocate, I'm not agreeing with this, I'm just, thinking, little, just playing on both sides for a second here. As a player, he does have a right because he's under contract. As a player. Now, you're testing the player's mentality in this case, which I, I'm on your side, yeah. right? And now, let me bring up the England point. Southgate's still the coach. Southgate has always picked Engl- uh, his favorite players. For example, Marcus Rashford, not last year, but the year before, did not get selected because he did not, quote-unquote, play enough. This is when Jack Grealish was also bad. He was not playing enough. He was selected. Last year comes. Marcus Rashford rightfully gets selected, right? Jack Grealish rightfully gets selected. Why is Harry Maguire selected? Fakoya Tomori. He did not. Fakoya Tomori from AC Milan should have been selected, and he did not uh, play. The dude's Canadian-born, and I'm... Now he's probably regretting it, but I mean, I don't think he is because Kanda uh, Soccer has his own look, issues, look but that, we'll get into Kanda yeah. Soccer in a second because we have an update on that. But yeah, so like, in my opinion, it's, he has the money already and I think he's ge- the nepotism of Gary, Gary Southgate has him a spot guaranteed no matter what. The only way he'll leave in January is if Southgate actually does not select him. Or, he could select him and bench him. Or if he does get his, like, like if someone offers him like massive amount of wages. Yeah, but no one's going to do that. Yeah. So the point is, and he was actually a, reportedly given captaincy as well because Declan Rice is gone, right? Which was kind of, st- I don't trust it. And I, I think that's stupid. But in my opinion, to your point, the greed, and I think he has an England spot no matter what. The only way he'll yeah, leave yeah. is if Garrett Southgate at, or gets fired or Southgate actually does not select him and plays someone else. Yeah, it's like, for sure. Like I said in the beginning, like he's in a, he feels like he's in a comfortable position financially and, uh, internationally so obviously. like why would he leave right like you're yeah. making money you're gonna be playing you're England anyways England, that's where you do England. well and you're probably, I don't think he's that stupid to realize that United fans are against him yeah. and they're gonna be more against him he knows him the now. situation or he, he knows that Luke well Shaw passed you in the depth chart and he's a left back yeah like that should tell you enough and because of that we can't get um Tadebo from Nice or Pavard or Pavard unless so, we spend the money which we're not gonna because and then the other side of things, now, as much as 
I don't mind what the front office did in terms of bringing. They're actually these guys actually Mortog and uh, Arnold. They actually listen to Ten Hag. Now they probably listen to him too much, but it's also their fault to spend ninety million on Anthony because when they could have gone in for sixty or seventy. So that's where their issues are now. They're so slow in the transfers because um, last year the whole Frank we stood by the Frankie De Jong thing. Now that could be part of Ten Hag. That could be yeah, part that, of that. Um, that's a different. Situation. That's a different story, right? right? This the, year, the point is this: the po- one month ago, you agreed to personal terms with Sofian Amrabat. Who's still waiting patiently? He's still waiting. <laughs> and did did I not mention a couple of podcast episodes ago that I'm like watch Liverpool swoop in because we have updates on the other midfield signings in a second? But watch a team like Liverpool swoop in because they've done it with Gakpo and they've done it with uh, Darwin Nunez. Yeah. And what happened today? Uh, they they got in talks. No, in not talks. okay. Well, okay. They, they didn't offer a bid yet. But Nothing. Like, yeah. But so they're in conversation now. They're least. they're aware of his situation now. The reports did come out later on, which kind of eased my fandom. That he's still kind of he's going frustrating, but he's still patient because he still wants Man United. Now, difference between last year's Man United and this year's Man United, Ten Hag has the pull. Mason Mount wanted United, no one else, right? Last year he would have rejected Man United 100% because of the history of Man United's name. But Ten Hag has done such a great job that Onana, you know, um, obviously now uh, Mason Mount, uh, what's his name, Pavard, uh, now. And uh, Amrabat, they want to come, right? So get it done. 25 to 30 mil, if that's legit, get it done. Just because, okay, financial fair play rules. Chelsea are signing everybody. They just agreed to Lavia. Yeah. Who they stole from Liverpool. They got like 150. And now they're getting Olise? 150 million they for They spent Saicedo. over a billion in three transfer windows yeah, already. 150 million for Saicedo already. Mans. Uh, was it 100, 100 mil for Enzo, right? I don't even know. 100 mil for Enzo last year. Yeah, so. 100 mil for Mudrick. Bro, you spent like 300 Adams. million right there on three players. So, like, you got you spent already a billion. Yeah. I love what Chelsea did because they got rid of the players that they don't need to. And I, we'll get into Chelsea in a second. But look at them. This is on ownership and this is on thing. How is Dean Henderson not sold yet when he could have been sold instantly for 20 mil? Yeah. How is Harry Maguire still there now? That's partially on him. McTominay. How is McTominay, McTominay, still, McTominay there? still there? How do we sell Fred for 10, not even 10 mil, I think. It was barely 10 mil. We sold Langa for fifteen makes sense. Alex tell us too. Saudi was three million only. Saudi are going outright paying for everybody. How the hell are we not in this? Three million for Alex Tellers for a Saudi team does not make sense to me. So how what are you guys doing? Van de Beek is still sitting there. He reports were a few weeks ago that we're gonna sell him. We already sold Fred. Good job. But then where's Amrba? Because you said when we sell the reports were when we sell Fred, we're, we're gonna get Amrba. I swear to God, if Liverpool gets Amrba, now I'm still gonna be a Man United fan, which sucks. I might cry. <laughs> I actually might cry. That like to our point of not to uh, how we alluded to the standings, I might have to switch Liverpool and put on like second or third now if yeah, they get Amrba. That's what they're missing, right? That's legit the piece they're missing. We have Champions League. Yeah, right. Here. Which is still surprising to me how people are <laughs> leaving Liverpool for Chelsea, but that's a whole different story. But we have Champions League. Amrabat wants to come. He ha- has played with Ten Hag and one of the, I think, Udinese in uh, the Holland League, right? The Dutch League. Udinese? No, what was it? Udinese Utrecht. Ta- Sorry, I think it was Utrecht. Uh, yeah, okay. I think it was Utrecht. But um, yeah, so what are you guys doing? That's all I gotta say. Like, yeah, I mean, like, what else? We, what else can we can pull the trigger, right? Last question before Man United. Before, unless you have some other comments, before no, we sorry. ramble too much. But last question for you: Is this front office slash ownership worse than the Canucks in your opinion? And all your no, other no, teams? No, no, Canucks are bad. I think this is worse, personally. Are you talking about like current Canucks? Well, okay, okay let me put the, put the uh, current ownership. Obviously, still Aquilini's. Yeah, and let's just and Benning. All right, ownership Man United is worse. Okay. Even though Canucks is not good at all. Um, Benning absolutely terrible. He's at the bottom of the list. So you're still saying that these guys are better than? Yeah, like but as guys, a collective whole, I think Man United is worse. Yeah, out of all their teams, yeah, I would say. Imagine if we still had Ed Woodward. We oh, could have had Society over five mil. That's we could have had Holland, and he rejected all of those ones. So, yeah, uh, I'm gonna just leave it there because our fandom is getting in the way here. But hopefully, on the field, stuff a little bit changes, and we beat Tottenham and. Because it was still worrisome, but yeah, no, one like, thing's for well, sure. Like, that we, no matter what happens, none of this shit... The midfield has should, to be better. No, yeah, none of this shit should uh, affect your on-field performance. As simple as that. This, yeah, the players, especially this, the players. This is, not a, this is not a distraction, right? You got you showed a product last year that's 
watch they were distracted last year and ten yeah. hag did a good job so yeah, ten no. hag will be distracted for sure because he's probably like yeah, okay, no it's fine about that like i don't care you gotta go out there and put on a better performance and oh yeah from the, no from the player side of things 100 percent, i agree with you no ten hag too i don't care oh no obviously ten hag yeah. too i'm saying like Ten Hag has to get the best of the players, but he can't control the players. Yeah, if the players are not yeah, running. Everyone. Then that's a different story. Yeah, everyone. I'm Ten Hag, I'm saying he'll be a slightly distracted on outside of the game. Well, but during a, the game, uh, we know he's focused. But yeah, yeah. That, that's a job. Though. Okay, so we deal with it. Let's <laughs> let's, let's move on with the other signings quickly. We mentioned Lavia and the whole story with Saicedo. Check that out last episode as well. He has officially rejected Liverpool <laughs> again. I mean, what? what, what Which what is hilarious. Expecting? Liverpool has freaking. Um, Europa League. Liverpool has this one dude. By the way, Maguire would also be playing Europa League. It's not like he's playing no Europe. But anyways, yeah. um, Lavia is going to ditch them for Chelsea. I think Lavia just got pissed off. Who knows? Probably. Um, and also, they're getting a release clause, which is like pretty cheap for Olise for like 30, 35 mil out of Crystal Palace. That's now, a good pickup as well. Chelsea Chelsea definitely got missed. Um, so how this. much do you regret putting them out of Europe next year? <laughs> Obviously, overreaction. Yeah, but obviously. From first but like, league. they're still too young to do. For me, they're to- still too young to be like you know top four contending. I still top, think I think they're top five. Six contending. I think they're top six. That like that team at best they're six for me. Their their version of the yeah Mudrick is like Anthony right now for them. But no, they had a good performance. They impressed me for sure. But it's gonna be growing pains, right? Because they, these young guys. Yeah. And then Liverpool's probably like looking like oh, they signed a Japanese guy today, so hopefully that. Uh, Liverpool no. has a guy named in Badgetech because you know our cousins are talking about him. Like he's really good he, that he played even last year. But, but again, like he's like Kobe Mino, like he needs a mentor type thing, which we have uh, in Casemiro. In, in Casemiro yeah. and hopefully a guy so then, like, like Umberbot, if but, they could yeah. sign like someone a little bit older just to fill in the job for a year or two, maybe it could help them out. Like they don't need to spend big, but at the same time, if you're getting if you're losing these names, it kind of it's kind of painful. Yeah, so that's I'll check for other signings quickly, but we'll talk about the Super Cup in a second because we had no clue it happened. But very quickly, last player I want to mention as a former Chelsea player, Joe Felix. Did you see the stuff that happened on the weekend? What happened? He's getting booed out of his mind. They're just swearing at him, Atletico fans. Now, I'm going to bring back United very quickly. Should we go get him on loan? Because we need a central guy at this point. I mean, yeah, obviously it could work. You did well in the but Premier League last year. I think he did well for um, Chelsea last year. Like he was a bright spot for them. Yeah, he got a red card in his first game, but after that, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I don't like realistic wise. I don't think it's gonna happen. But like, um, but you would want to is what I'm saying. I mean, I I'm interested. I'll say that for sure. Okay, uh, Super Cup. Did you know that the UEFA Super Cup was today, and it was Man City playing against? I know it's Sevilla. Man, well, I know it's Man City Sevilla, and I know it's on a Wednesday. I just didn't know which Wednesday. Dude, everybody on Twitter was talking about this Amrabat stuff and uh, Chelsea signing some Japanese dude. No one was talking. Everybody on Twitter was like, what the hell City's playing today? Shows you the levels of the club. But I did tune into the game at work and City, Holland, once again, no goals in any finals he's played in. Um, Early goal by Al Al Nizri. Al Nizri. Nizri, Sevilla striker. The Moroccan striker as yeah, well. Yeah, so he put Sevilla up early 1-0 and then some guy, Powell, I believe his name, but I'll double check, um, and then tied it up and then City, City won 5-4 in, in penalties. Yeah. Um, the guy who scored was uh, UEFA Super Cup. Well, this was also a big game for City because they've never been in this position before. Right? That's true, Because they right? finally yeah. won the Champions League too. Sevilla yeah. had opportunities. I think they lost all of their Super Cups. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's good for City. They won another trophy. Uh, Palmer, sorry. Not Powell. Palmer. Um, So another young guy there. De Bruyne was clearly missed. Oh, it's dope. And Sevilla always out for three to four months. UEFA always. De Bruyne's out for three to four months. Yeah. Getting surgery. Rest in peace to people's FPLs. <laughs> yeah, pe- pe- peps, pep, pep messed up. It's clear as that. Yeah. Uh, they're Obviously, they're getting your boy Doku that you liked from yeah, Belgium. Doku, Doku's pretty good, yo, in uh, my opinion. And they're trying to get Paqueta, like I said. But yeah, that was a super cop. No one gave a shit. <laughs> I mean, but we didn't watch it. We can't. No, say I'm just saying. Yeah. Not many people gave a shit. Clearly, yeah. like every fan, like people will still tune in. Yeah. But yeah, so Man City won another trophy. Um. All right, moving on to Women's World Cup. Yeah. Uh, you want to start off with that? England are in the final against Spain. It's coming home. <laughs> is, it, is it coming home? <laughs> uh, I mean, finals at 3 a.m. Pisses me off because I don't want to wake up at 3 a.m. And we have oh, well, we have a soccer tournament to play. And uh, we're definitely not waking me up. Me and you are finally we'll, we'll do a different podcast, like a non-sports podcast where we talk about our past sports experience, but 
yeah that sunday we're uh yeah. we're playing a soccer tournament so we're definitely not gonna wake up at 3 a.m for sure yeah, that's at for that sure. point but yeah i mean i feel like it's gonna be a good game because spain's been really good yeah no you sorry like you, you uh, no no like... i need to break, i forgot to put the topic on the board we have to talk, this is kind of it's man united related but we have to talk about this okay one. yeah so then um but yeah. no um women's world cup you made that face yeah no, i i just looked at it <laughs> i completely <laughs> forgot about to put on the board but yeah no i mean like england spain good final spain's been playing well the last 10 minutes of spain sweden it was pretty nuts just because there's three yeah, goals three goals in what seven minutes yeah around that yeah, I think, I think yeah spain's team like i thought they were an underrated team i didn't think they were gonna get this far but i thought they were like a team not to be like because they had the best player, right? Who was injured, though. Patella, yeah. I believe her name is. Patella's, yeah. Yeah, and then... But their whole team, and I was listening, I don't know where I was, I think it was the radio. Um, she, the uh, gold... I uh, forgot uh, her name, but she was saying, like, that whole team is essentially young. So yeah, they're, they're up and coming. They're, like, 19-year-olds. 19 19-year-olds, 19 yeah. Like, that girl that scored the winner in that... Uh, the Netherlands game. It was 19-year-old. Yeah. yeah, so Spain's on the rise, and clearly doing something right, and obviously tying that to Canada, what are they doing wrong, right? And uh, yeah, England, I mean, England was definitely one of the power. Sam Kerr scored a banger, though. First start, uh, scored a banger, yeah. But, but England, unfortunately, England just showed it. They could still, well, at the end of the day, outside of England, the other three teams, I guess Sweden too, but especially Australia and Spain, um, weren't expected to get this far. And Australia is definitely playing for a medal, and them winning bronze at home will be big, yeah. That'll be big, that will still sure. be big. That'll, that could still be their gold medal game, quote unquote, yeah. Uh, they're gonna come out. So, on the other semifinal, Sweden did lose to Spain 2-1. And like Joven mentioned, it was a thriller that. at the end. We, we just mentioned that. I thought you were talking about England for a second. Oh, Bro, England, we, Australia. We, we talked about both of them. Okay, we talked about both of them. So, <laughs> England versus Australia. Sorry, England versus Spain. I'm still going to rock with England. Same, uh, I'm rocking with gonna, England. I'm not, I don't care who wins. I'm saying I'm not, that's my prediction. I think that was my prediction from the beginning. Yeah, it was. And I did not jinx it. Uh, up to this point, uh, you might know. You might have now. And other side, you know what? I'm gonna give it to Australia, bronze medal game. Yeah, uh, mm. yeah. I, no. I, just, I, just, I just want the home good feel, good story. That's all. Yeah, I agree with you. I'll, I, I, I feel like they might pull it off as well. Okay, so the thing I was gonna bring up that I completely forgot. It is United related, but it's on the serious side, and you probably know where I'm going with this. Mason Greenwood. Mason Greenwood. So. There's reports that he's saying he's going to be reinstated. Now, we're not going to explain this Mason Greenwood situation. Just Google Mason Greenwood scandal, and you'll know exactly what we're talking about. And that's it. That's all I'm going to leave it at. But from our point of view, um, he's supposed to get reinstated at 2010 because on, in the words of the law, he's free. Not guilty, yeah. But it's weird because we saw evidence, right? That's the part that's weird. And this just comes, first thing, this is just comes where, like, if you're talented, you're going to get a second chance. You look at Nick, uh, um, Kareem Hunt, you look at Tyreek Hill, you look at Joshon Watson, you, right, in the NFL, and other sports as well, not just their um, soccer. Benjamin Medney's reinstated. Um, yeah, so the thing is, if you're talented, you're always going to get a chance because if this was a random guy in the Man United Academy or just a random Matt player on the Man United squad, he probably would have been released by now. Yeah, it's true. Um, I mean, it's kind of difficult to comment on the situation, right? Because, like uh, you said, it's not guilty, but we saw what happened, type of things. So, like, yeah. you don't know. And they have he he has a kid with her. Again, not gonna go too much into detail, but that that's the fact. Yeah, yeah, but like, yeah, you just don't know like what is like the right side, basically. Like, you don't know what, what's the truth, right? What's okay? So here's my reaction: if he is reinstated, which is not of Man United, put a statement out saying that they're still gonna announce it, so it's not official yet. And obviously, if he's on the squad, how would you react? Because this is the first time that's happening to your squad that like something like this is happening. I mean, like I feel like, like I'm still gonna root for the team. And if Mason Greenwood happens to be on the squad and plays and scores, I'm still, still might be like, celebrate. Okay, yeah, we we scored. Like, yeah, yeah. But I mean, as a player, I feel like they're just gonna. I feel like they might be excited to get Greenwood back just because you know they don't want to see like you know their fellow teammate just be in that side of situation, right? Because, you know, at, like, it was like everyone's first reaction would be like, oh, this guy messed up. He made a terrible choice, all that stuff. Right. But like some like uh, but some other people be like this is next his level. teammates. Yeah. yeah. His teammates may be like, OK, but like maybe he needs like help type of yeah. thing. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I, I can't comment. Like I said, I, I don't know what to say. Yeah. I just I, I, I don't know what the because like there's both sides. There's two sides to the story and there's the truth. Right. 
So three sides to a story. Yeah, this is just one of those things where like, we saw the evidence that we know where it went. But yeah, I know from like obviously we're talking about it because we have to talk about it. At the end of the day, yeah, this could have been, and we, we would have talked about it if it was any other team just because it's United. We we still are not trying to hold our biases here. Um, we still want to talk about this, and yeah, it's like at the end of the day, like I'm gonna be truthful. Um, I'm still gonna be rooting for Man United at the end of the day. Obviously, I see Man United fans on Twitter, myself included. Like I, if it were up to you, would you reinstate them? Not not because of the backlash or anything. Well, I don't like if you had the choice, if you were at Ten Hag and you're like, your choice on you. Do you want Greenwood on the squad? Uh, I'll probably go with. Probably go with. I don't know. I don't know. Like I can't. I didn't, like I said this. I, can't I was call listening. Me. I was. Listening, I can't make a decision. I was listening to the HBM podcast today at work. The, the latest episode, and their guest, I think his name is Scuffed Media, is his name. Like yeah, title, yeah. and. It was a new one, and he was saying like he does a good job of differentiating. For example, Chris Brown and the whole beating Rihanna thing, right? We yeah. saw that the R. Kelly yeah, yeah, scandal yeah, yeah, there, yeah, yeah. right? So he was saying like he still will listen to the music, and he does a good like Kyrie Irving thing. He does a good job of differentiating the person and the position of power that they have. Like in this case, soccer player; in their case, is a musician. But they're still the same person at the end of the day. So it is weird. Ah, uh, yeah. Like I, I mean, I, people change. People deserve a second chance, right? Type of thing. Like it's not. It's just weird because he's not punished at the same time. Yeah, that's true. But, but let's move on. Yeah, but <laughs> let's move on. Just yeah, yeah. that's why we, we had to bring it up. You yeah, know why yeah, we had yeah. to bring it up? We're trying to be sports media, so yeah, right, we kind of yeah. have to. But yeah. last thing on soccer, I'm not gonna rant about it. But Canada soccer, <laughs> like again, I'm gonna mention it. We ranted mainly me. Uh, uh, check that video, video out. Yeah, there's a video. There's about a video. It. Check that out. You guys won't. You guys will love to hear it. That's all I gotta say. But John Herdman, Canada men's coach, has. Uh, let me get the exact information. But he did interview for the TFC Toronto FC availability. Now, how much of this is a tactic to get more money at a Canada soccer, which they're not gonna give him because you know why? Or how much of this is him trying to figure out his future? And this leads to the question. Who's after Herdman? Like, obviously, we don't know, but like, who would be better than Herdman? No, I don't think at the moment, not anyone, right? Yeah. So, it's just it came out of nowhere for sure, and yeah, I was surprised for sure. I yeah. I was I think he's still gonna go Copa America. I don't think I guess unless TFC offers some bank, which they have done to like guys like Insigne and stuff. So if they offer him a bank, they might, but. If not the money, then I think he'll still stay through 2026. Like, he'll be one of the only players to coach a host on both men and women's side. He could have been the one guy who, he could have been the first player or first coach to lead a team to victory. But that went away because Francis, women's coach, just, they obviously won. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he already, he was also coaching the men's who already won. So he could have been the first guy in the men's. <laughs> All they had to do was win one game. But, um, yeah, like for me, it's it's a, it's a tough situation again. Like, what's happening with Canada Soccer? Yeah, they have I one feel like friendly. you just you just trying to figure out his situation. Like, what what are his next moves for himself and his family type of thing? And uh, me personally, I feel like I feel like he might just be like a better international coach than a club coach, in my opinion, because he's been so good at the international level. He's a good motivator, but uh, like after that, he might overthink his tactics a little too much. Because at the end of the day, he did not win. Outside of bronze, he did not win the big thing in, with the woman. It was better, yeah, Beth yeah, Priestman. That's true. And she has her own flaws in different ways too. So Clearly showed, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's also other coaches that have been considered. So that's the thing with that. So sticking to the MLS actually, Leo Messi. Nine goals in six games. Not surprised. Last place team in the league still because he hasn't played a league game yet. Yeah, but the league's, league's cup, cup yeah. he's in the final. I mean, and the tickets are going for like $600 and they're playing Nashville in the final. Bro, like... It's fun to watch because Messi's enjoying and playing again. And MLS defense is ass. <laughs> that too, right? Like, I mean, Busquets is going to feast. Jordi Alba. Been feasting. Jordi Alba's feasting. And it's also helping other players like Robert Taylor becoming to Robert Lewandowski. Uh, who's the guy? <laughs> and then Joseph Martinez. Yeah, him. Uh, is killing it again. <laughs> because I think Joseph, I think Joseph Martinez was a, an Atlanta MVP. Player. Yeah, Atlanta yeah. player. Won he was it. sick for them. Yeah, won it all. Uh, what, what's it called? Miguel Amarin, Miguel Almiron was on that yeah. team as well. And I was then, like, why did that name sound familiar? Yeah. He's killing it in Newcastle. Yeah, so they right? won, Atlanta won it all. Joseph Martinez won MVP, I think, a year after as well. So, yeah. I mean, Miami's set. 
as simple as that. Fun to, it's good do to you see think they, it's good to see Messi. Do you think he, they win, make the playoffs somehow? I think still they have to win every game for sure, in which they have done. But <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, there still might be defensive issues, but offensively they're set. They've shown that they can outscore everyone. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that that's the update with that. Let's get into UFC. Um, fight weekend championship. It's UFC 292 main event. Sean O'Malley versus Aljamain Sterling for the bantamweight championship. And only be honest with you. Oh, Weili Zhang uh, defending her belt against Lim- Limos, um, Brazilian, and the uh, women's. The rest of them, to be honest, oh, Marlon Vera and Munoz, I've heard of them. And that's about it. So, like, for us, we only care about main the main event, but I don't mind watching Weili Zhang because she's freaking killer. Yeah, so. The, uh, I feel like <laughs> that last performance it, yeah. was so insane. Like, so, I, I think, like like, let's get that out of the way. I think she wins. I think she wins. I don't too. care who the other person is. I have to see it to believe it. Yeah. And that was the same thing that Thug Rose did that. And I know you hate the name Thug Rose because she wasn't a Thug last time. Oh, that was a terrible but, performance by her. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Sean O'Malley, Algerman Sterling. I mean, O'Malley's biggest fight of his career. That's clear. For sure. First uh, five rounder for him as well. Yeah, for, so I mean, it's gonna be a challenge for him. Because I did, think did you Sterling, think he won the Yan fight? Not not Sterling, the other no, one. I don't even. I thought Yan won the fight. I thought Yan got robbed against O'Malley. Yeah, I, I don't even remember it, bro. I remember it because I remember I thought O'Malley lost it, and everybody was. I remember because Twitter was Twitter was saying rigged, Dana's puppet or Dana's boy. Yeah, whatever, yeah, right. So. Yeah, Either probably, way, yeah. yeah. So I think he barely survived that. If anything. Sterling still a champ. At the end of the day, people don't give him his respect. Oh, he whatever. deserves it now. Yeah, like, I'm just saying in general, w- for whatever reason, he doesn't get his respect because yeah. of the way he won the belt, and then. But like he's proven these last few fights that like he was a better man. It's just weird because like Delashaw sh- um, shoulder popped, and then even the Jan- the rematch of the Yan fight, you could say Yan won that fight, arguably. No, I, I, I some I people Sterling. are just saying there's an argument to for be that. made, but and obviously he handled Cejudo. And again, people are still saying it was closer than it should have been. And in this case, on paper, I think Sterling should destroy him. I think him. Sterling should, yeah. Destroy him. It. He's the wrestler. O'Malley's the striker. Obviously, I'm an O'Malley fanboy, so I hope O'Malley wins. But... Are you Dana's puppet as well? No. Okay. Dana ain't paying me. I don't give a shit. So. <laughs> <laughs> but... um. No, just from a fan base perspective, like I'm a fan of O'Malley. Yeah, he's, he, he he's some, entertaining. He has some crazy knockouts. And he's entertaining as hell. And yeah, so for but me, but I'm I'm going Sterling. Stay well, here, I'm going Sterling. I think he'll like choke him out. I mean, or no, no, he, the way the way that Sterling's fights, I'd probably go decision again, right? <laughs> well, the, the Dillashaw fight ended early because of uh, the, because of the shoulder, yeah. So I think this fight's gonna. But end. I feel like I feel like this one will yeah, end in like Sterling, but Sterling did have the pressure early on as well. Like yeah, instantly, again in the Dillashaw fight, so. I'm just intrigued to see how O'Malley will do in his first five rounder. How is he going to yeah, pace it? Yeah, his biggest so. fight of his life. So, yeah. Uh, my prediction, Sterling stoppage. Sterling some decision. Point. Submission stoppage at some point. Sterling decision. Okay. Um. All right. Let's move on to the NFL. And we got some news. And we'll start off. Do you want to start off with the Colts or do you want to start off with the running backs like I signed? Uh, we'll start off with the Patriots and the Jets. Okay. So, Patriots signed... Ezekiel Elliott to a one-year $6 million contract. And, and then, Dalvin Cooks got signed by the Jets. Who was versing his brother in week one. And he got signed for Buffalo. one year, $8 million. So he was obviously looking for a I lot think more money. When, you, when I saw that thing, I was like, I think it was tweet by Field Yates from ESPN. Dalvin James Cook is versing James Dalvin Cook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they have like the, each other's like first name as their middle name. Yeah. So, I mean, no, Dalvin Cook signing for Jets makes sense because it'll help Just Brees. the depth. And it'll help Brees Hall because he's coming back from injury, right? That too. Um, the only question for the Jets is how's their O-line going to hold up? Yeah. And, and you still give Dalvin Cook Aaron Rodgers as a, as like those uh, play actions. It's, it's going to passes, everything. Yeah. So, big signings there. Now, obviously, we have a Colts news. So we'll get into that. But stick with the running back for a second because we are a Colts fan. Those of you, if we do have fans out there watching or wondering what we think of Jonathan Taylor, uh, current situation or what is his current situation? Current situation, he's away from the team now. He he was rehabbing last week. They're currently on a joint practice with the Bears, but um, he was given, and it's apparently a legitimate ex- uh, excused absence, a personal reason. So Now, if it's legitimate, we don't know. Like Obviously, we hope everything is good. Um, nothing bad on the family side or his side of things. 
So yeah, it's just a waiting game. He still wants out, he, or he wants. To, I'm, I'm. Him wanting out is more so him wanting to get paid. No, I don't think he wants out. It's out. like him, his trying to wait. It's like it's like Lamar requesting a trade. Yeah, it's yeah. like um, Debo requesting a trade. It's the same yeah, thing. Like, In my opinion, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's his. It's just their way of trying to get leverage, right? Yeah. Because but he has zero any. leverage because he's literally he, injured. They don't have any, right? Yeah. Um, I don't think Taylor's the type of player that's gonna hold out. Like, I still think he'll play out this season. He did say he won't, he's only gonna play if he's hundred percent, which is fair. Makes sense, right? Yeah, I'm not because like, he's like, I well, I'm not gonna get paid. So what's the point of me? Obviously, which makes sense. Yeah, like it makes sense. You gotta be. Healthy. So as long as the Colts, and we want him healthy. As right? long as like the that, Colts that, medical staff don't clear him, then we know it's legit. If the medical staff clears him, then we know it's a situation. Yeah, that's the best way to put yeah. it. But the reason why we have Colts news, Jovin's wearing the Anthony Richardson shirt, and he's officially starter. QB one. QB one. He'll be the I mean, seventh different quarterback starting for the Colts. Yeah. And hopefully no longer. Like my quick thought, right? Me personally, as a fan, I love it just because I want to see him week one. And like I don't want to be like I can't like I'll be too excited not to see him play type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Where you like have to wait a year. But, I mean, there's two sides to this, right? People like Patrick Mahomes and, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, so, Lamar Jackson, who, like, played, still played in his first year, they, uh, they weren't, they didn't start right away, right? Yeah. And obviously, two Justin top, Herbert didn't technically either. No, he's, I'm not, I'm that not was like third him. week. I'm, but, it was week two. <laughs> but he but, was, yeah, but he but was, yeah, still, I'm not counting him, but like, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Obviously, it benefited them Aaron because Rogers. they're top 10. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. They're top 10 players. Aaron Rodgers, that's the one I was forgetting. Yeah. Brett Favre, obviously. But that was three years. <laughs> yeah, no, but the thing with that is like Colts are not in a good situation where the Chiefs and the Ravens were, you know, playoff contenders with Alex Smith and Joe Flacco, right? And Green Bay with the Brett Favre. The thing with the, him playing right away, the people benefited from that, obviously, Peter Manning. Had a shit rookie year, but turned it around. Andrew Luck. I'm just naming Colts wise because uh, you know, makes sense. Joe Burrow, even though he got hurt, still had a good T-Law. rookie year. And then uh, Tila, right? Trevor Lawrence. So there's mixed, there's mixed reactions. And to be fair, I think eventually, my personal opinion, they made the right decision of starting him because Colts are not in that situation where and he hasn't no, played in and he's college. not he hasn't played enough, right? Yeah. So my thoughts, yeah, I pretty much agree with you. The difference is, I guess, for me is, please give him a good O line. The O line better hold up, because clearly the backup O line is shit. That's terrible. <laughs> it's so bad. And, and if a, there's an issue, at we, right are, guard. we have an issue at right guard. And if that's not solved, I don't want him to turn into the next, you know, possible Trubisky, possible whoever. Like he's a project at the end of the day, right? Yeah. But his upside is probably the biggest in NFL history. Some say. Like his like he's an athletic freak, right? He's yeah. six foot, six four, two fifty five. Yeah, he's, he's bigger than Derrick Henry. Yeah, so yeah, Mike. For me, I'm fine with it. Like the preseason game, we talked about it already, and this is this goes for any QB. Now, like you said, we what we play Garner Minshew. What are we Super Bowl? Are we playoffs even? Yeah, like, no, like not. not really. Like okay, yeah, he might have a good year and surprise people. It's football. Anything could happen, right? You agree with that? Even with the same but, thing, but, but the, the same thing could happen with A Rich. But the team around him is not even that good. Uh, exactly what I'm saying. So the same thing is with A Rich, right? Richardson, give him the opportunity, and if he excels, right? You okay, Colts, like you mentioned, you have literally two ends of the spectrum. You had Andrew Luck, who was a stud from day one, made the playoffs his first three years before our stupid front office did not give him an O line to be protected with, and ultimately retired, and. You had Peyton Manning, who had arguably the worst rookie year ever. And people were calling him a bust off the bat. But people... And then Peyton Manning is arguably the best player that has played talent-wise. Some people will say Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers. But in some people's eyes, Patrick Mahomes. Best quarterback. In arguably, like, the top three quarterback all time, all you could time, say. All time, and, like, probably definitely one of the best in Colts franchise. Probably the best. Probably the best. Uh, obviously, we have Johnny Unitas. I don't know. I'm not going to talk about him. So, in our eyes, he's the best. Because yeah. longevity-wise, he played the longest. And he won a Super Bowl. So, we got to be patient. Like, Colts fans in general. And I'm talking about, I'm saying thing I'm talking about Bryce Young. The same thing I'm going to talk about CJ Stroud, who's supposedly going to start as well. And whenever Will Levis goes or whoever else goes and plays quarterback, any rookie or any first-year quarterback. For, for the Colts side of things, I trust Shane Steichen because he did exactly with 
did what he did with Jalen Hurts. The difference is Jalen Hurts actually played three, four years of college. And Jalen Hurts sat. And he and he sat, but he also killed it in college. Like he was a good, pretty good college player. Why are you crying? Oh, what's going on, yo? <laughs> You're Anthony Richardson starting are you crying oh, that much? Anthony Richardson got me teared up, <laughs> yeah. yo. But no, um, in that sense, yeah, like I'm, I'm fine with it. Let him learn. Hopefully, you don't shock his confidence, though. But what people did say, though, is he learns on the fly a lot. I mean, like, look, he interception. Learned. Like, from the interception, he bounced back. Yeah. And obviously, Alec like, Pierce people, sort of people, like, people are not going to look at the game, right? People are like, oh, here, they're going to start him after throwing an interception, no touchdowns. Should have had a touchdown on Alec Pierce, right? Got a 15-yard rush call back. Good completion to Kay- uh, Kylan Granson for 20 yards in the middle of the field, right? He looked good. Like, he looked like he belonged. After yeah, the interception. Like that was a test, and he yeah. passed it. T- they had the joint practices, and I saw like mixed reactions on Twitter. Some people because his efficiency was great. The problem was the O line apparently was shit, so he couldn't get the deep ball out. But there were some two. I don't know if you saw the clips. No, I didn't see it. I, I think Colts Mafia might have posted yeah, it. So you yeah. can check it there. But if not, let me know. I'll send it to you. He, the, he dropped three, two to Pittman, one to guy, no. There's a guy we signed. Kenzie. Um, no, no, no. Him, I think too. But there's another Amari Amar- Rogers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a nice little per- a perfect on the route pass, like dot, like a dot, right? So, um, the thing but the problem is yeah. they're saying that like a lot of them were check down plays because the O line didn't hold up properly, but he found it and uh, he sucked on the seven v sevens, but on the eleven v eleven he was fine because obviously open field he could also run. And this is joint practices, right? So this is his first time outside of Buffalo playing a different scheme defensively, and Eberflus is different than Gus Bradley at the end of the day. Yeah, that's true. So, and then, yeah. Another thing with Anthony Richardson, he's not your typical pocket passer guy, right? He can make plays with his legs, right? Which yeah. could help him a lot. His deep ball accuracy wise. his deep ball accuracy is great. Can he be consistent on like... The just medi- medium. The, a medium game. And yeah, then, the the obviously, medium. yeah, the short ones. It's like those those throws were like... You gotta like really like sling it, right? In between defenders, like those slant plays, right? Or the ones where those out routes, yeah. where you gotta get the ball between the sideline and receiver, because if you have it a little bit inside, that's a pick. Yeah. So we obviously we're not gonna give our predictions on where the Colts are gonna finish. But here's my question to you: If we somehow get the first overall pick, are we gonna be like Chicago and trade it away, or are we gonna draft? Depending on how no, he does, no, assuming no. A. Rich is decent, we we can't. I, I don't know. I don't think. I but don't Caleb think Williams is that big of a stud. That's true. Too, that's right? the problem. Like Caleb Williams is like. Was hyped like not obviously not T Law hyped, but he was hyped at the end of the day. Yeah. So um, like in this draft, we don't know who was going first, even though people. I, mean, I feel like I feel like they're still bank on the upside, and like try it to depends get. on how he performs as yeah. well. Like if he shits the bed, then yes, we're drafting Caleb Williams. Probably. But otherwise, it's Marvin Harrison season. Marvin Harrison. Yeah, season. Marvin Harrison, Brock Bowers, maybe an O lineman. <laughs> I think it's O line. I don't think we can have another. Tight yeah, end, right. But I know that guy's a stud. Brock but, Bowers is a stud. But we have like ten <laughs> tight ends on the board. Yeah, but they're all like mid level, right? But now. again, same thing. But like, they're yeah, the mid. tough thing is gonna be. Hopefully, we're not the first overall pick. I don't mind me the third overall pick and get Marvin Harrison Jr., which means one of Pitt or Pierce might be gone. And another guy, shout out rookie Josh Downs, killing it. He's killing it. Killing it. That's, he's getting open. Know. He's his route running is insane. It's insane. This bro, is what like, we were missing last year, and those, we got that's it. Slot receiver. That's right? slot receiver. I oh, know. I was really excited with that pick. Yeah, when we got him, especially when I learned he was like really good in the slot. And then, I feel like and then his video. Oh, yeah, his video Inter- as well. Video, yeah. 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 Um, those of you guys wondering, type in Josh Downs draft video and you will be an instant fan of him. Even if you're not a Colts fan, you'll be a fan of Josh Downs. That's all yeah, I gotta yeah. say. But let's, let's move on. Let's move on because we obviously, <laughs> we have to get, I think it's like at this point for every sport, we have to give at least five to 10 minutes to our favorite team because shit is going down. Yeah. <laughs> and try to like true. limit it to that. Yeah, we try to limit it. <laughs> Unless that, it's yeah. like big breaking news or big news. Yeah, but yeah. don't worry, we're not getting into the Canucks today <laughs> or the Blue Jays. But, um, NFL still sticking there. Zach Martin has ended his holdout. Yeah, he pro goes. Bowl, pro Bowl, all pro guard for the Dallas I mean, Cowboys. He's big, big, uh, big, 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 big for the Cowboys because yeah. they need him. And big clear. for him because he's no longer paying fines anymore <laughs> for missing uh, days. Right? <laughs> so yeah. they agreed to it. Um, it was like 18. That's all the Dallas Cowboys. Well, I'm sure you guys yeah. will hear it more on first take and all that, but yeah, that's no, all you're going to hear from us. <laughs> We're trying to give the small teams a lot yeah, of love. Min- minimize the Cowboys talk. But yeah, no, Zach, uh, big for the Cowboys. That's all I could say. Hopefully, JT, you different position, I know, but you could you could do something like this as well. Yeah. Um. Blindside. How much did you love that movie? 
I like is it. it like, <laughs> is it like a favorite sports movie before what we were going to get into happened? Um, I mean, it's up there. Now, how much did, when you watched that movie before knowing it was a true story, were you like, oh, sick movie. It's definitely not a true story. I felt, it felt like it was too good to be true. It, it felt like too good to be true. So people are probably confused listening to us, but. The movie Blindside, which featured Sandra Bullock, Lily Collins, and a bunch of other people, was actually a true story of an NFL s- uh, star, Michael Orr. And I'm not gonna watch the movie. We're not going to spoil too much. But the quick synopsis is that he was this homeless guy based on the movie. Homeless guy that got picked up by this uh, white, fat, rich family, uh, adopted them. I'm, and then audio people don't know what I'm doing. I'm literally air quoting adopted. And... Um, Pretty much gave him this uh, career in football, helped him, like, you know, raised him like a child. Yeah, blah, raised blah, blah. him, right, yeah. And Michael Orr did not, came out later on. This is like after I knew who, I don't even know who he was, right? This is yeah, like yeah. after he was in the Ravens. He's a first round pick with the Ravens Super Bowl champ. He's retired now. Re- recently released a book. Before the book, even like a couple of years ago, I was looking into him. I was Sky Up to, right? And, you know, he, he did say that um, he wasn't a fan of the movie because he wasn't portrayed correctly. Meaning that, like, they made him look like he was, like, some guy on the streets that did not know how to play ball. He'd never touched a football in his life or whatever. He did play high school ball, apparently. He did play basketball. So he was knowledgeable. It wasn't like the Tui family. The Tui, however you say it. Yeah. Um, did not really teach him football. He already kind of knew the stuff. So it's not like... They made it look like he was a dumbass in a way. But they still had a relationship because obviously, true story, I'm going to check their Instagrams out and see. Yeah. And the sister did have like pictures with Michael. So you, you knew they had a somewhat of a relationship. Not as much recently. So the recent news that came out was Michael Orr has a book tour. I don't know how much of it is in the book, how people found out. Apparently, that adoption's a lie. And it was a conservatorship. And that means that with adoption, if you were adopted, you would be legally my brother still. Am I adopted? I don't think so. <laughs> 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 From what I know, I have your baby pictures. Okay. We have your birth certificate. All right, that's good. Yeah. Um, that's a question for mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> Threw me off, man. <laughs> but okay, if you are adopted, you would legally be my brother. You would be legally entitled to yeah, all yeah, the yeah. stuff, right? A conservatorship is more so like owning. Now, you yeah. use the word slavery. I don't know if that's the case, but essentially like, so that movie... He did not make money off of it or he did not make much compared to the four of them, the brother, sister, and the mom and dad. Yeah. Right? The Tui family in general. So he's come out and said that, like, yeah, this is like crap. Now, I don't know how much of it is him just being petty or bullshit. Is, all this, this is alleged. We yeah. got to make sure we cover our asses here. I don't think they'll see this video, but allegedly this is what happened. And, and let me, I'm going to try to get more details. But man, if this is true, I probably will never look at that movie the same again. And then I have a follow-up question, but you go ahead. Yeah, I mean, definitely, like, we enjoy the movie, right? Like, when you, because uh, obviously you watched it before me. And you're like, yo, you got to watch this movie. You're going to like it. And yeah. I liked it. Yeah. So then I'm like, is this really real? So to me, just because it felt like it was too good to be true. But at the same time, it was just like, you know, it seemed like a good story. But how much of the story was actually true because all well, I know already was not yeah. true he confirmed a little bit of that yeah because all I know about his story and his situation was from the movie and the funny thing is Sandra Bullock won an award of this and now she's getting so much hate that like she, either she killed the role too much or like even though she has nothing to do with it she just played the role yeah she played the role and she's probably thinking like what the hell did I get myself into now because <laughs> she, obviously she met the family there's no way she didn't yeah but essentially w- what happened was or is um uh, gone to court with allegations that his adoption was a lie uh, states that the four in the 14 page petition that sean and Lee Ann tui never adopted him he adds that the tui's instead tricked him into signing a conservatorship shortly after he turned 18 that gave them legal authority to make business deals in his name so it's essentially like maybe us signing a contract somewhere but we sold our name but we didn't know about it yeah type of thing but now obviously this is adoption so this is like you th- you know everybody loved the Tui family for what they did and now it's like oh you're assholes if allegedly yeah, allegedly allegedly assholes. <laughs> learning from Pat McAfee here <laughs> allegedly <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so again the movie did more than 300 million so you would know why Orr was pissed if he didn't get any of that movie because it's yeah. literally about him and yeah um, he also remember in the movie they were saying that like Orr did say he felt like he was being used for the Ole Miss thing yeah, yeah. so might 
that was a foreshadow, I guess. But yeah, so obviously the Tui yeah. family has denied it. They're saying that no, we legit cared about him and stuff like that. Yeah, so he was a high school senior when he signed the conservatorship deal in 2011. Baltimore drafted him in 09. Wait, what? what, what? No, in his 2011 selling me- memoir. That's okay, what it was. Yeah, yeah. Was Sorry, like, 04. <laughs> that, doesn't 04. Make, that doesn't make any it sense. It was 04 okay. when he was a high school senior. Because uh, it was a book before a movie. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, so. See, Mike didn't yeah, grow up all? with a stable family. When the Tui family took Mike, they loved him and wanted to adopt okay, him. Okay, now I, the void. Yeah, so, now uh, I feel like it's kind of getting into movie yeah. stuff now. Watch the movies or don't watch the movie if you don't want to support it. <laughs> I don't know what to say at this point, but yeah, I'm probably not going to tune into the movie properly anymore um, until this. Like, I mean, I haven't watched it since, but yeah, uh, banger movie if it was, which leads to me the question, is American Underdog true? Because <laughs> yeah, like, that one, Kurt, Kurt, now the difference is Kurt, Kurt Warner, Warner was, was the guy. Like directly involved too. Directly involved. Obviously, or it wasn't, but. Dude, that looks way more of a true feel good story than this movie. Yeah, right. Like <laughs> that one looked he was a grocery store arena football player and blah blah blah, right? And so, then became like Super Bowl champion. In his rookie year. Yeah. So I mean, we don't know what's true anymore. But like if no, you but look I feel at like that because Kurt Warner was directly like involved in that. Yeah. So unless Kurt Warner just like, you know, like try to overhype himself a little bit. True. I mean it could be, <laughs> yeah. who know, for all we know, but yeah. the difference is he makes the money in that too. So Yeah. So we probably we'll never know how true it is, but still an impi- inspiring story though. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are calling out like the media back in the two thousand early to, or late two thousands, early twenty tens because of Johnny Manziel stuff and like some other stuff. And now this comes out of nowhere. Uh, I would never thought we'd be talking about the blind side on this, but yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. Uh, moving on to some sad news. Um, now I don't know much of this player. I know Seahawks fans, and I'll I'll look where he else he played. Alex Collins, running back. Have you heard of him much or no? I have not. But I, I think, I, I he, I think a, he was a 2020 pick. Like he was drafted in 2020. Or 2021 something. I feel like... 2016. Oh. Well, that's way too young. <laughs> okay, no, no, I was thinking of the NHL. Okay. I was thinking of NHL. Yeah, yeah, that one's an NHL. Yeah. Um, Seahawk, Re- uh, Raven, Seahawk again. And then we went to Memphis Showboats where his jersey's retired, which is... Um, let me just determine the league because I don't, and this stuff I generally want, don't want to misquote anything. United, the United States Football League, yeah. Uh, running back who uh passed away at the age of 28. So, sad, sad news again. I'm not gonna comment too much, we don't know him but as like, a player. But at the end of the day, I saw tweets about it, I saw RG3 tweets, so you know he was well liked in the community. Cause of a uh, traffic collision, so. It was a when the motorcycle he was driving crashed. So it was a uh, accident, and yeah. So um, um, re- rest in peace. And we're gonna transition to another death, unfortunately, which you re- kind of referenced already. So let me get that out again. Don't want to misquote anything. Yeah, this one was a uh, equally as sad. It's a death. It's equally as sad. But 2020 draft pick. Uh, for the Maple Leafs, I remember the Maple Leafs, Dan Milstein client, and where's the NHL news here? There, Maple Leafs prospect Rodian Amarov. Amar, okay, I, I know I'm butchering this the name. Rod, Rodian Am- 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 Amirov died at the age of 21. Uh, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Yeah, in, in uh, February of 2022. So. Obviously, the Maple Leafs first round pick, you knew he was a high end talent. Um, obviously, Pittsburgh, Carl Dubis, gave his, um, their, they, as a collective, gave their um, thoughts as well. And yeah, um, I mean, ever since we started the pod, there's been a lot of like young guys dying. I mean, it definitely gone too soon, for sure. Um, Pe- people said he was like a, a infectious smile, loved, and yeah. Uh, he never played a game in the NHL. He did, uh, obviously, brain tumor. And he did play in the KHL before that, so. And represented Russia before, the, obviously, the Russia stuff happened. But yeah. he represented Russia and international play. So, rest in peace to both of you guys. And, um, thoughts and prayers to you guys' family and loved ones and friends. Yeah. Tough transition. Let's move on, though. Last topics of the NHL. Um, officially joining... Um, Bergeron in retirement. Yeah. David Krejci has officially retired. 
this one was not as much of a surprise as Bergeron's was. Well, Bergeron's wasn't a surprise, but like people thought if one of them was going to retire, it was going to be Krejci. Um, he officially retired. For me, he was definitely an underrated player because I didn't know how good he was. He was good, bro. I genuinely did not know he was like that elite, like a two line center, second line. He was center. a second line center, for yeah, them, for sure. So for all those years, and then for how long he played as well with one team. I believe it's one team. I don't know if he played on anyone else earlier, but I'll double check. Big, big part got, of of big, course, you got to give me the fact check now. <laughs> big, big, big part of the Bruins, obviously, run that they had in 2010s because of multiple Stanley Cup final appearances, Stanley Cup champion. And you're right, because he went back home to play a bit. So all in, all in one team in the NHL. All in one team. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I genuinely did not know much about him. I, I like obviously when you think Boston, you think Marchand, you think. No, Chara, you thought Tim Thomas, you thought Bergeron, you thought even like Lucic. For me personally, me. Yeah, I know. I, I Krejci was in that boat for me because you were more into NHL a little bit later on after yeah, the Canucks. No, Krejci was it, big. To me. So let's let's get into the Boston side of things again. Your number one center, your number two center, or out of the league. Are you ready to make a bold claim in a way? That Boston no is not going to be in the playoffs well, next they, year. Assuming this assuming is a current if roster. If this is a current roster, they're not making the playoffs. Right? With the, that Atlanta, loaded the Atlanta division is too good. Right? Maybe they're in the Pacific division. Maybe. The names that they're saying that is... Um, Elias that, Lindholm? That's one. And he's no Bergeron, but he's up there in terms the of... The best, like, could two be way. best replacement. He's one of the best two ways. Yeah. And also Shifley, who's not a two way. But he's a guy that they're saying to replace him. Even then, like, okay, yeah, that helps. But as of right now with Pavel Zaka, and I forgot the other guy, that's how you know it's <laughs> not that's a how you know it's a situation at center. <laughs> yeah, they're in trouble. Cause they're Mar- in trouble. Is Marshawn going to carry by himself? No. No, you need center, man, bro. You need like, center, man. People don't realize Patrice Bergeron was a sulky winner last year. He probably could have been a sulky winner this year if he were to play. Yeah, he could It's have not been. like he was Gen- some bum just chilling with yeah, Boston. It's not like, it was like, like the Chara at the end of the His game didn't days. fall off. He's old. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like, but well, his game didn't fall off. But his game he was fall part off. of the best team in regular season history. Yeah. For a reason. So both of these guys, I mean, people were still confused last year with Marshan being up for how long as he is and Krejci coming to back to the NHL, how good they were going to be. They did not miss a step. And on top of that, they lost Tyler Bertuzzi. They lost Dmitry Orlov. Yeah. Yes, they still have Hampus Lidom and uh, he was a... And then Charlie McAvoy. He had, uh, there were our Norris favorites there, but two top line centers gone. It's a big issue. It's a big sure. issue. So, I mean, as a Canucks fan, I love it <laughs> in a way. But yeah, I, mean, I mean, I don't. I, I'm kind of over 2011 now. But uh, I think I don't think I'll ever be over it, man. I'm a little bit over it now uh. like, compared to it. But <laughs> obviously, it sucks. <laughs> I'm not saying like that. Too. But <laughs> that was our time. Okay, um, you have the trade details. Jeff Petrie got flipped from Montreal from that um, uh, the Carlson trade. Yeah, I think it was... And a- he's going to Detroit. So, I'm confused by what Detroit's doing here. Well, they're, like, making moves and, like, they're trying to, like, win the cup. Then they're making moves that, like, they're trying to rebuild. But I think it was Jeff Petrie for a fourth rounder. And Lindstrom. And, uh, yeah, I think one Gustav of the Gustav Lindstrom. Gustav Lindstrom, yeah. I've heard of that name. So, I mean, I guess Habs W because for a guy... They Habs could- retain 50% of the salary. I think it's a Habs Bringing w. the cap hit down to 2.34 for the next two seasons. You got, you, well, you got Petrie for, like... Basically nothing, and he flipped him for something, right? Um, that's a W for Montreal, uh, Detroit. I just don't know what direction. I don't you're know what take. they're doing. I don't know what direction. I you're genuinely taking. don't know. Like you traded Hironic way, people thinking you have to pay him because he's young and you got to pay him. And yeah, you finessed the Canucks in a way. Maybe who knows how he performs? Which we'll get into Canucks draft later picks. On. Draft picks been questionable. Yeah, but the picks you drafted questionably, and you brought in players that are aging to big contracts. Ben Sherratt. Ben Sherratt did not work out with Mosider at all. Who else did they sign? Kyle Kopp? No, Andrew Kopp. Andrew Kopp, yeah. I so, think a year like, before. what are they doing? <laughs> and then Petrie. I mean, who knows? Petrie might be a better fit with Sider than it was Sherratt, but then again. Yeah, because he's the hormonic replacement, quote unquote. Then again, they have, I think, I forgot. What's the guy's name? The defenseman that they paired. Like, I think it was John Wolford or something. John. You're asking the wrong guy. Bro, I, I <laughs> you're asking remember. the wrong guy. I tell you that right now. It's like it starts. It's a JW initials. I'm pretty sure, <laughs> but I need to quickly check that right now. But no, like if you want to keep going, yeah, what no. Is their direction? Um, I guess I'm gonna talk about this. If Boston is falling out, is Buffalo the most likely team to make it now? Like we discussed before, Buffalo, Ottawa, and Detroit rank them, yeah. and obviously after the DeBrincat trade, which Detroit added, does that 
overtake um, Ottawa because the Brinkhead is still a big piece missed from um, Ottawa, right? So in your opinion, also, is Buffalo going to be that team that takes over Boston if we project, currently project Boston to come out of the playoffs? I mean, I feel like Buffalo is the most favorite, I guess, right now. I still believe in Ottawa as well, but I don't think it's Detroit at all. And the guy's name was Jake Wallman. So you were kind of off. <laughs> I said JW initials. No, I mean like the name, way, the way you were saying it. Yeah, I know. But I knew it was JW initials because he really stepped up for them. And that that's the reason why Mo Sider kind of... Because he struggled at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. And then that's the reason why Mo Sider found his game at the end. But yeah. Yeah, I'm just I'm just confused with what Detroit's doing. I'll be honest with you. This is, this is a team that is, is going to be intriguing to watch as, a, as just a general hockey fan and whoever wants to watch it. No. Depending on like the games are at, it's Detroit, so I I don't generally don't give a shit unless they're playing the Canucks. Yeah, but, right. But um, so a, a team to keep an eye on afar from for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Um. Okay. Last thing, just very quickly, the NHL twenty four cover is out. I doubt we'll get this game, but first of all, we don't even have a PS five. There's no point getting this game. Yeah. It's Kale McCarr on the cover, and no, I mean not really a surprise. I don't know if McKenna has ever been on the cover. I don't even think Crosby's ever been on the cover. As Actually, well. I know Ovechkin has. Let me just double check that. Yeah, no, but but quick. I mean, McCarr deserves it, right? He's pretty mm-hmm. electrifying defenseman. It's kind of weird to see a defenseman on it, but I mean, McCarr has been, you know, the, the guy for a bit. Everyone knows, everyone who has a hockey knowledge or into hockey right now knows Kale McCarr. So it makes sense that he's on it. I yeah, I don't like, like I'm I don't, ne- you know what I'm surprised? I'm going to be biased. How the hell does Sadines together were never a cover? <laughs> like, yeah, that would right. have been sick. That kind of was nice. Okay, so, like, yeah, this year it's Makar. Last year was Trevor Zegers, Sarah Nurse, Matthews, Zuban was on the cover. Zuban was on it, yeah. Uh, McDavid, Vrad, Mirtir Senko, Taze, Bergeron, yeah, Martin Berder, Giroux, Stamkos, Taze. Maybe, Kim. maybe Crosby. I don't think Crosby... Dion Phaneuf was on the cover with <laughs> Cal- This is Calgary was- Dion Phaneuf, by the way. Maybe Cal- Crosby gets Yeah, it. no, Crosby was never on the cover because I'm... Oh, wow, eight was Eric Stahl. That was the first ever one I had. Wow, that's surprising. Ovechkin, 07, Le Cavalier. Yeah. Crosby, wow, Marcus Naslin <laughs> was on the cover once. Oh, yeah. Disrespect Crosby, yo. What is this? Or he probably just didn't give a shit or pay or whatever. Because obviously he's payment involved, but I'm sure he doesn't give a shit that much. So. Yeah, I mean, he's still one of the best. <laughs> so Crosby and McKinnon have never been on it. Yeah, I mean, I'm shocked with Crosby, don't get me wrong. That one I'm sure. shocked, yeah, because I've actually been on it twice. Yeah. But yeah, um, congrats, McCarr. I don't know if it's something you wanted, but we probably won't be buying your game, though, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> well, we suck at it anyway. Yeah, I mean, when do we play now? We got we got podcast lifestyle, dude. We yeah, have yeah, wins, right? So. <laughs> we got to talk about you. Yeah. Um. That being said, that's pretty much it. You know, make sure you guys check out our EPL prediction video, as we mentioned at the beginning. It's a banger. Me and him. What? Add, we're not at it like argument but we are reversing each other reversing each other right it's just not like it's not where we sit down and just look at the screen and put someone we have to agree with each other so once again check that video out on um, those of you have thank you for the early support again uh, instagram get us to 100 followers we love the support we've been getting on that for yeah, sure like the views the comments yeah. the likes on it insane our latest um youtube short as well i think or second latest but yeah so Thank you again. We're at, I think we're we're at 149 subs. We might be at 150 when this comes out. Hopefully. <laughs> 50 subs away from 200. Let's get that rolling. Let, let's try to get that by the end of September. I'm not going to say August. I doubt it. But that, you guys can help out with us. Yeah, yeah. No, and, prove us wrong, you. Prove us wrong. <laughs> and uh, just to tease you guys, a uh, video, very special banger podcast, bonus podcast episode coming out Saturday. So stay tuned for that. This is the reward for whoever stayed tuned to the end. I don't know how many of you guys did, but that's what you guys will get from us but yeah that's pretty much it we'll catch you guys in the next one peace Peace.